With an impressive project of peace and friendship underway, several new classes of starships would be born, and one class, the Echelon class, would take up the mantle of patrol vessel for the area formerly known as the Romulan Neutral Zone. But what's the story behind this new class of starship? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Echelon class as first seen in Star Trek Picard to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, there isn't a lot of information on this class. And so what I've done is weave together a history based on that era to give you good trinaries a better understanding of why it came into existence. But as always, because this is just a beta canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. With the destruction of Romulus, the area formerly ruled by the Romulan Star Empire fell into chaos. And out of the ashes of the Romulan homeworld, several separate factions would be born vying for power over the once great and vast territory. At the time, the Federation believed that there were two main factions. The first, known as the Old Guard, was headed by the Romulan Praetor, and in an attempt to maintain his power base, he would institute many harsh policies across his space, an attempt to maintain power by fear. The second faction was that of the Tal Shiar. Headed by General Sela, the Tal Shiar would undermine every order the Praetor dictated, while at the same time offering their assistance to former colonies and occupied worlds throughout the former empire, in a bid to obtain power through manipulation. In the end, however, neither side would be victorious, as a third faction quietly bided their time, making friends and allies secretly becoming the largest faction to vie for power. This faction, known as the Free Romulan Faction, was originally a small dissident movement which had been brewing for several centuries. Through cooperation and understanding, and a promise of a free society similar to that of the Federation and their Vulcan cousins, worlds and colonies which had broken away from the Romulan Star Empire after Romulus's destruction, suddenly threw their support behind the Free Romulan movement. The Praetor's power had always been the Romulan military. Sworn to follow and obey the Praetor, it came as quite a surprise when General Zolus, the head of the Romulan fleet and first advisor to the Praetor, arrested the Praetor and swore the military's allegiance to the people. And by 2391, with a newly elected leader in place, the Free Romulan Republic would come into existence. Even a new homeworld would be founded, and with moral and democratic values in place, both the Federation and the Klingon Empire would agree to assist the Free Romulan Republic in re-establishing itself as a governmental body. The Federation didn't really know what to expect from this new power but agreed to provide aid and construction support for New Romulus. Having originally withdrawn their support from the evacuation of the original Romulus after the synth attack of 2385, the Federation member worlds felt that the Romulan people would blame them for the extreme loss of life sustained within that crisis. However, that would not be the case. The Romulan people blamed their leadership for that outcome, realizing that centuries of hostility and deceit had played a major role in those neighboring the Star Empire not coming to assist them when their home world was threatened. As a result of this new approach to the galactic stage, the Free Romulan Republic would reach its hands out in friendship to any and all worlds and governments, beginning many new projects with those the Star Empire had once deemed enemies. One of the most important projects undertaken would be that of the Borg Reclamation Project. Finding a disabled Borg cube in their space, 
The Free Romulan government immediately asked both the Federation and the Klingon Empire to assist them with analyzing and developing both countermeasures and technologies based on the Borg ship. The Klingon Empire would turn down the offer, but would agree to supply materials as needed for the project, while the Federation, eager to strengthen its relationship with the new government, in hopes of solidifying that government, as well as wanting the opportunity to conduct in-depth studies of a mostly intact Borg cube, readily agreed. By 2399, several amazing and important technological breakthroughs would be made. The Federation, eager to put these new technologies to the test, would begin to commission three new classes of starships. The Sagan class, the USS Stargazer to be the first ship commissioned with the new technology, the Deuterstadt class, and of course, the Echelon class. Sitting at a length of 516.3 meters, the Echelon class would be designed to be operated by 325 officers and crew members. With a standard safe cruising speed of warp factor 7 and an emergency maximum speed of warp factor 9, the Echelon class would also be designed to allow for the addition of a quantum slipstream drive once Starfleet had settled all the issues with this particular new technology. Though equipped with standard weaponry of the time, including both phaser banks and phaser arrays along with torpedo launchers, the Echelon class would also contain a new technology known as a traceable payload. Traceable payloads would allow any target hit by the Echelon class's weaponry to be tracked up to five light years distance, a benefit which would come in handy as most of the Echelon class vessels would be assigned to patrol the area formerly known as the Romulan Neutral Zone. After the collapse of the Star Empire, several privateers as well as organizations like the Orion Syndicate would attempt to take advantage of the situation. And due to the utter chaos Romulan space itself was in, many of these nefarious entities would easily acquire Romulan technology. Specifically, state-of-the-art cloaking devices. But even while cloaked, the traceable payload weaponry of the Echelon class would make these starships visible to sensors and allow these pirates and raiders to be hunted down and brought to justice. Multispectral shielding, which had been the norm for Federation vessels in the latter part of the 24th century, would be replaced with quantum stability and metaphasic shielding. Much stronger than its multispectral counterpart, these shields would also allow any starships traveling at quantum slipstream speeds to maintain its structural integrity and avoid temporal stresses caused by that drive. Typical of the new era of starship design and comfort, the Echelon class would contain the same type of bridge module included in the Sagan class. A spacious and sleek design, this new bridge module would have a far more sterile and militaristic feel than earlier starships of the same era. Sensor technology would also be upgraded thanks to the Borg Reclamation Project, with sensor efficiency and range being upgraded to almost 300% above those of previous starship designs. The Echelon class also had the ability to enter fleet formation mode. Like Borg starships and drones operating in tandem, now Starfleet vessels could utilize bioneural circuitry, along with Borg-based computer components, to automate entire fleets of Federation starships to operate as a single unit under the command of a single person. Not seeing the danger in this new technology, fleet formation mode was publicly demonstrated for the first time during the 2401 Frontier Day celebrations within the Sol system. Unbeknownst to Starfleet Command, the implementation of this protocol had been influenced by renegade changeling infiltrators who were working with what was left of the Borg Collective. And Fleet Formation Mode's activation served to expedite the Borg's takeover of Starfleet's entire new fleet of starships. Thankfully, Admiral Jean-Luc Picard and his former command crew of the Federation starship Enterprise D were able to thwart this latest Borg incursion, utilizing one of the only remaining functional starships not susceptible to the protocol within range of Earth, the rebuilt USS Enterprise-D. 
After this incident, the protocol would be removed for reconsideration, and the remaining undamaged Echelon-class vessels would be sent back to the former neutral zone to resume their patrol and assistance duties. Though a small starship design, the Echelon class would prove to have a big heart and a fighting spirit, something which would endear this class to the citizens of the Federation and the Free Romulan Republic, which in turn would lead these once enemies to become the best of friends, earning the Echelon class its place in both Starfleet and Romulan history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Echelon class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel develop technology from the Borg Reclamation Project? Then consider becoming a channel patron a major help which allows this channel to buy resources and 3D models to keep it going. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long and prosper, and Jolantru.